Hello, hello. Welcome to this week's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. This week, I have a guest who is talking about something I've talked about before, but we are going to go so much deeper. And I think you're going to get a really great experience in learning about copywriting, how human design relates to copywriting. And I think we're going to wade into the area of websites, which I've actually never been able to talk about on the podcast before. So I'm so excited to have my guest today. Her name is Rachel Weaver. She is a copywriter who works specifically with spiritual entrepreneurs and she infuses human design into it. So there's a lot to cover today. You might not know what any of the hell those things are. So we're going to dive in. Rachel, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Jen. I know it's been a few hurdles to get here, but I'm so excited <laughs> for our conversation. Yeah, there's always tech issues. So why don't we start? I usually like to find out how people got where they are. So I'm so curious, how did you wander into human design and copywriting and what is human design? So I don't even know where to start. Well, I'll start with what he, is human design. So it's based off of your birth date and time. It's mm -hmm. in basically a map of what your energy is, how to use your aura, how do people receive your energy, things like that. And really it's how to be your authentic self. And the whole reason I got into it was I am a serious self-development junkie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love all things, spiritual development, understanding who I am better, like all the things and discovered human design about eight years ago. And five years ago, I started dabbling in copywriting. I had a photography business prior to, and I really wanted something that was online that could serve a greater audience than my little town mm -hmm. and started writing copy for people, discovered I was fairly decent at it, but always felt like something was missing. There was an authentic piece that was missing. You could ask somebody who they were and what they wanted to do, but it always felt like it was a little bit forced. Like I'm selling this thing because I think it's going to sell or it's because somebody else is selling something similar or, mm -hmm. and it, it always felt contrived to me. And human design really was that layer that I was looking for. Because when I could run my client's chart and go, well, this is really what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, that's so cool. Like, yeah, I do want to talk about that. Can we put that in the copy? Be like, yeah, yeah let's put that in the copy. Is it um, like when so you're really doing where it started? When you're doing human design, well, when I figured out human design and I found it in 2017 or 2018, I felt like, the way that I always say it is I feel like I came home to myself. Like I finally understood why I was the way I was. And the thing about yes. human design is it sounds a little woo woo and it sounds a little crazy the first time you hear about it because it's based on your date of and time of birth and where you were born. But I have found mm -hmm. that it is so dead on and it helps you know. It's just like any other personal inventory. Like you get to know yourself more clearly. Yeah. But human design is about energy. And I think I didn't really understand that until 2017, how different all of our energy mm. is, like with the different kind of energy we bring to a room or our business or whatever. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's listening mm -hmm. and they're thinking, this sounds kind of wacky, this sounds a little woo woo, this sounds ridiculous. I know. <laughs> I wanted to say, I know and hang in there and like check it out because it really, it like, it just makes you so much clearer to yourself. It does. It really, it gives you a permission slip to mm. be and do all the things that you wanted to, but yeah. either shamed yourself, you told yourself that it wasn't good enough or whatever. Like, I think we give, we put ourselves into a box because of the way we grew up or because of things that people said when we were younger or right. even as young adults. And I, human design really is, is that permission slip to be like, oh, that's, why I want to do this, this thing all the time. Right. Yeah. Myself as a manifesting generator, I used to give myself so much shame and guilt over changing my mind all the time. Mm. Like I, and to me doing something for my entire life literally feels still like death. Like yeah. I don't want to do the same thing the rest of my life. And I'm that as a manifesting generator, like I'm probably not going to, and that's mm -hmm. perfectly okay. We're, that's, what we're meant to do. We're meant to do lots of different things and dive into lots of different passions. There's no shame in that. And it was a permission slip to be like, oh, 
okay, I can go off and go do this other thing then. (laughs) Yeah. So you're a manifesting generator. So there's five different types, right? Yes. And so you're a manifesting generator. I'm a projector. And what else is there? Can you tell us a little bit about each kind? Mm, I'd love to. Okay. So start with the manifestors. They are the big visionaries. They're the ones that are really outside of the box thinkers. They really shouldn't be do marketing (laughs) in any way that someone's telling them to. Like the standard way is not the way for them. They need to really kind of almost reinvent the wheel in some ways and go out and try different things and really work with their creative urges to discover new ways of being, new ways of doing things, right? Right. And manifesting generators is the next one. And they're similar to generators, but manifesting generators have a defined throat, a motor to the throat. So they also can speak and be heard. Mm -hmm. And that's I'm sorry, I'm getting a little tangenty, but manifesting generators, we're multi-passionate. We want to do lots of different things. We're going to combine our passions within our messaging. So you're going to pull different things together that seemingly don't necessarily go together, but the way you put them together makes sense and it helps people skip steps. Okay. Mm. Generators are really these, they're here to master something. And so once they find that thing that they're really lit up about and really passionate about, they go all in and they can master it and master a process, really. It's a step by step, this is how you do something type process, A to B processing. The projectors are the guides, they're the ones that are here to really help us understand our own energies better and go, this is how things could work better if you're paying attention to these things. Like they're mm-hmm. the guides really showing us how to maximize our own energies. <laughs> and then the reflectors are the barometer. They have all open centers so they can really feel into what someone's feeling. They're here to say, hey, like I can really see that this needs to be changed in order for you to fulfill what you need to fulfill. So their messaging is really around community and pulling people in and creating safe spaces for Mm -hmm. the people that they're meant to lead. You know, I've heard these five types described many times and every single time I learn something new about myself and the people around me. And so that's why I think these kinds of, I call them inventories, but these kinds of like ways of self-knowledge are so vital because it helps us judge ourselves less, but it also helps us stop comparing ourselves to other people and judging other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's helped so much in my understanding of other people and having compassion for them and going, oh, well, they're they're not meant to work the way, the same way Mm -hmm. that I am. Right. And even telling them like, don't compare yourself to me. Our energy is so different. Don't ever think, don't try and keep up with me. (laughs) Yeah. And I think personally, I'm always surrounded by manifesting generators who they're like the energizer bunnies and they, they are just visionaries. And that is, I mean, ever since I've been in my twenties, I have beaten myself up. That is not a strength of mine. I am an implementer. I'm a strat, you know, I can strategize, but I am a tactician And I can explain anything to anybody and I can make you understand. But I really judged myself because I wanted to be a visionary. I wanted to be a big thinker. But I realized like, oh, when you know that you're a projector, you can stop beating the hell out of yourself and just work your magic and kind of lean into it. And that's where I, I really wanted to talk about this today because when you're, first of all, when you're comparing yourself to everybody else online it makes you feel bad. It makes you feel like you're not keeping up. But then also, how does this affect our writing and our copy and our content? And that's where I'd love Mm -hmm. to head. So let's talk about what copywriting is and how we can infuse, you know, what you know about human design into copywriting. Yeah. Yeah. So copywriting is really any written thing in your business. So it's your content, it's your website, it's your emails, it's your sales pages. All of that is copy because in an essence, it is selling whatever your service is or your product is. And when we're looking around and copying or really looking around and comparing ourselves to what other people are doing, 
we run the danger of trying to imitate them. And I'm guilty of this. I think we're all guilty, especially in the beginning, because we're like, oh, <laughs> well, that person's successful. I just need to do what they're doing. Right. Yeah. And that's, it's really a very masculine old way of thinking, like do, do what I did and you'll have success. Mm. And I really feel that that's not the case because it is really our energy. We're coming into a time where we really do need to know who we are and what our strengths and gifts are to be able to communicate in an authentic way that doesn't feel pushy. And this is why I love working with spiritual entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. because they're the ones that are like, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be persuadey. I don't, I just want to sell my service. I just want people to show up in my inbox or on my (laughs) calendar. (laughs) Like I get that, but you do still have to sell, (laughs) but we can do it in a way, (laughs) right? We can do it in a way that feels really good, that feels like you, that is just offering your service and saying, here's what I do, why I'm really good at it and how it can help you. And then it's when you clearly communicate that to people, then they're like, oh, well, you totally can help me. And like, I want to, I want your session or whatever it is you're selling. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you work with people to, so I'm guessing spiritual entrepreneurs they're not all one type. Like you probably have spiritual entrepreneurs who show up as generators and reflectors and projectors, right? Like they're all over the place, right? Even though they're spiritual entrepreneurs, they still reflect all the different five types. Yeah. Okay. You said that for spiritual entrepreneurs, it's really important for them to lean into their voice. I actually also agree with leaning into our voice is so important, especially in a world where AI is so prevalent and we're being like fed things by, you know, algorithms and the more that we, you know, the world is so noisy that being noisier and louder isn't the tactic that's going to work. So can you talk about how you help people actually, like, can you give us a couple of examples and how can people do this work? I think the big thing to keep in mind is that when we are our true authentic self, Mm -hmm. we're not worried about what other people think. We're not concerned that what we do isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. We're not overthinking what we do. And that's why I love human design because it really starts to show you where those limiting beliefs are. Mm -hmm. And when you can go, I I mean, because I've had my own journey with these types of thoughts of like, is what I write good enough? Yeah. And when you see that, you're like, oh, well, I do know that I'm good at this because of both my human design chart, what people have told me I'm really good at. I can show up and be me and I don't have to compete with anyone else. Mm -hmm. It really shows that when you are your authentic self, when you are just coming out and saying, this is what I have to share, that that's what really people want. They want someone that is there to help them and not persuade them or try and make them buy something that they don't actually want. We want people that are true. That's the whole no like, and trust factor, right? Is that we want to buy from someone that we trust and that we feel is going to look out for our best interest. So if you can show up as your authentic self, you have you know with integrity that you're not going to try and screw someone over. They feel that too. Like there's this energy exchange. Like even if you aren't aware of energy and um, how some make, someone makes you feel, you are on a subconscious level. Mm. And you can tell when someone is showing up as themselves or if they're trying to pretend in being someone else, right? You yeah. can feel that in them. You can. This has me curious because given the last three years, I was just recording a podcast today about, you know, in 2020 when TikTok exploded and all of the creators were really encouraged to use other people's voices and, you know, like mimic their voices, use their audio lip sync. And it was just, there was nothing authentic about that at all. You couldn't get to know somebody. And I staunchly was, I was so angry about it. I was just like, I am not doing that. That's not my personality. I feel like an idiot. But also I thought it was really boring because you've already got enough of a veil with Mm -hmm. the computer screen. Now you're going to put somebody else's voice over your voice. So now that you have stepped into a 2023 world and we're seeing people kind of come out 
of that repetition or lip syncing, what struggles are your spiritual entrepreneur audience struggling with now? There it's it's overthinking. It's I feel like it's a lot of the things that I struggled with myself of overthinking mm-hmm. what you have to write. Okay. Overthinking, trying to go, okay, what's my niche? What are their pain points? How do I talk about what I do? And blah, 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 blah. and like so you're spiraling into overthinking so much that you're you're not connected to yeah. yourself and you're definitely not connected to your ideal client. Mm. You're just overthinking. And then that's when I think when you also fall into the trap of, oh, so-and-so just wrote a post about this. I should write a post about that too. Yeah. And you're not in your zone of genius, right? You're in you're in influence mode. Instead of being blinders on, I know what I'm good at. I know what I do. I'm just going to talk and I, I'm connected to my ideal client. I know what I'm here to do and serve. And I'm speaking from that energy. Yeah. So at this point, it's time to really lean into like letting go of, you know, sounding like your mentor, sounding like the gurus, sounding or using other people's audio and trying to look like somebody else, which I've been yelling about for a long time. So I'm glad that we're, that other people are finally coming along to this. When you have like a session with somebody and you're like, you know, we need to figure out what's your human design and then what does that mean for you in terms of your voice or your and your word choice and you know do your people struggle with like I don't even know I don't even know who I am I don't even know what authentic means I think there's a little bit of that but I think most of my clients have been on some type of spiritual journey of understanding themselves mm-hmm. at least some and they know who they're not They know that that. they don't want to be pushy. They know that they generally they are on the more feminine side. So they're more like, I just want flow. I just want clients to come into my inbox. I don't, I hate social media. They always hate a lot of them hate social media. They don't want to show up every day to sell and things like that. And they, they have an idea of who they are, but they don't know how to translate that idea to online. Mm. So then how are the ways they know who they are? Oh, so sorry. We had a glitch there. So you're saying that most of your clients come to you already knowing who they are. They just don't know how to translate it to social media and their website and things like that. Like they're trying to make that look like the old way of doing things, the more masculine, like, oh, I just follow this formula. I help blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Right. 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 Like the template. Just give me a template. So let's wander into the uh, world of your website, which is still really important and people are still going to check out your website. How can we start to know ourselves, our human design, and then how can we start to do this, especially on our website? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I really encourage people to look at their... I mean, your website is your core message. So it's yes, it's offers on there and things like that, but it's really what you want to be known for. Mm -hmm. There's different ways of talking about this. It could be your unique selling point, your USP. Mm -hmm. I call it your core messaging. It's basically the thing that you want to be known for. Mm -hmm. That should be front and center on your website because that hopefully shouldn't change a whole lot. It might change a little bit over time, but for the most part, that shouldn't change. So for manifestors, it's like, what is your big vision? Where do you want to take people? That should be front and center. For manifesting generators, it's what are you combining to help people skip steps? For me, like it's all about human design and copywriting. Yes, right. Uh, Generators. Yeah, it's generators. It's like, what is your process? And then what does that process do for people? Why do they need to come to you for this process? Okay. Projectors, it's your system. You're here to (laughs) master your system as a projector. So really honing in on what that is and then how that system is going to help people get through their challenges, right? Mm -hmm. And reflectors, it's what... community are you building? Why does somebody need to be in your community? And what are they going to like grow from or learn from, from being in your little pod? That is so clear. And it's again, that permission slip, because it's so funny whenever I talk about anything else other than 
systems or, you know, this is like the way forward or this is a way you can use it. I just okay. feel like I'm always lost or I'm just not being myself. Mm -hmm. And so when you said like a projector is going to talk about the system, like my whole thing is, you know, we're going to figure out a way forward that works for you. And I take you through the paces and do that with you. But it's just, again, so much freedom in the specificity. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's easy to get lost in all of the marketing advice out there. There's so much different stuff. When you think about it, I mean, there's story brand, there's just so many different ways to talk about and do marketing. So how do you know what's the right way for you? Right. Mm -hmm. And this understanding how your messaging should be structured is something that I am super, super passionate about because it differentiates you right out of the gate. And in a way that you're like, oh, that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Every time. If, if you are, so say you know what your human design is and you're really leaning into it. And you, are there like certain other kinds of human design that are looking for you subconsciously? For example, would like a reflector be attracted to working with a manifesting generator? Or would a generator be attracted to working with a projector like does it kind of work like that or is it just much less scientific than that i mean i think maybe a little bit there's by and large more generators and manifesting generators than okay. any other type and so i think those types of people will find you most often okay. i find a lot of manifesting generators and projectors in my world with a few hand, you know, some generators, some manifestors, and only a couple of reflectors. The reflectors, they're only 1% of the population. There aren't I a lot of them to begin it. with. That is the craziest thing to yeah. me. Yes. I think it's actually when you are your authentic self, you are attracting people that want that energy that really feel like when you're being yourself, you're like, I want to be <laughs> around you because you have such a positive energy. And when you are your authentic self, you love other people, you are encouraging of other people. And that's when people want to be around you because you're a delight to be around. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like you're really grounded in who you are and it brings a confidence. Like, and I think that's really attractive mm -hmm. to people when they're trying to figure out, do they, do I trust this person? You know, there's just this sense yeah. of like, you really understand yourself and you're, and it shows through in your copy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So a curiosity about the about page, since we're talking about websites, I love what you said about the homepage and like the direction or the focus of your homepage. How would an about page kind of reflect based on your human design? I think that one, I mean, it's going to get a little bit more nuanced to okay. what your specific human design is. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I want people to always remember is that the about page isn't necessarily about you per se, but how your experience is really going to serve them, right? So still keeping that focus on your ideal client and why you really are the most knowledgeable, experienced, gifted person that can help them, right? So it's mm -hmm. sharing your story and depending on what your chart is, there's other pieces that we can add in there as well. But it's really, it's keeping the focus on your ideal client and why your experience really is the best to help them. While also staying true yeah. to the words you would use and the energy you would use to say something, right? Yeah. 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 So I have another nuanced question about the website and human design. There's always going to be a services piece of your website. How does human design and how you talk about your services, how does that mesh? Because I feel like it's a very nuanced thing to talk about your services in a way that doesn't feel salesy or pushy, but you really do need to talk about your services. Can you dive into that a little bit? So there's a lot of things that go into that. Okay. Your service, I mean, we want to talk about your service in the benefits of it and the transformation that it provides people. But the way that we do that is really rooted in what your full chart looks like. And this is actually something that I want to do a training on because so many people have problem with pain point marketing. And I agree. I don't like pain point marketing. I don't like 
really driving home what you're stuck on and why you're stuck and Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Like, but we do still need to understand who our ideal client is. Why are they where they're at? And why do they not have the thing that they want? Right? Right. We can't serve them if we don't know that information. But we can look to our own human design chart and understand them in a better way. So what I mean by that is that with human design, there are defined centers that are dark, that are colored in, and then there are white centers. And the white centers are areas that you take in energy from other people and then reflect it and amplify it back. It's areas that we can really be intuitive and understand the other person and where they're coming from in a really deep, deep way. So if you are, I take the example of the head center. If you are open in your head, you are, can really take in the inspiration of people around you. It's not, inspiration isn't necessarily a consistent thing. And when you can understand that center from the highest expression, the highest expression is that you can have inspiration all over that your mind is a playground to explore different things. And when you're coming from that highest expression going, I understand that inspiration is really hard or that you overthink it, or that you feel like there's a pressure that you have to take this idea and make something of it. You don't, oh, you don't mm-hmm. have to. And here's how my thing is going to help you work through that. So it's taking your chart and understanding it. Um, it's taking your definition and your openness and really understanding it from a deeper way so that you can speak to your ideal client from a place of integrity and knowing that what they are going through and how you can help them. Does that make sense? It does. It sounds super nuanced. And like you have an incredible amount of knowledge that somebody trying to do this on their own is probably (laughs) going to struggle with this part. But what I'm hearing and tell me if I'm wrong here, but when you know yourself so deeply and especially if you're a spiritual entrepreneur or somebody who doesn't like to market with pain points or you hate marketing in general and it feels pushy, it's going to be really important to figure out how to step into the language that not only feels good to you, but that like attracts the person you want to attract. And this is not a cookie yes. cutter thing ultimately, but knowing yeah. ourselves, we have to really know ourselves in order to create copy that makes us yeah. feel like it's okay to be on social media. It's okay to off make our offers because we're coming from a place of like, I can help you. And I want to help you and I don't need to be pushy to do it. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like this, the work that you do sounds incredibly nuanced. It is. Yeah. 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 And I really want to make it simpler for people, but I, it is really, really nuanced. And, but you're right. You nailed it in that when you understand who you are, you can help people from a place of integrity. You can help people from like, look, I know that what you're struggling with, because I probably went through it myself and I can help you get through this and come to the other side so you can have what you want. And that's really what it is. It's, it's coming from a place of detachment that y- mm. you can work with me. That's great. You don't have to, <laughs> I can help you. And it's for the mutual benefit of everyone. I know people can follow you on Instagram and learn more about what mm-hmm. you do. But I feel like if people really want to lean into this work, they've got to get on your calendar and talk to you. So do you work with people one-on-one? I do work with people one-on-one. I do deep dive sessions where it's just a single where we go into one topic and or I can work up to four months with people where it's really a deep dive into every writing your website and sales pages and and all the things. Amazing. I want to say before I let you go, Finding a copywriter is hard. You've got to, you know, you really have to resonate with that person and it's a really special skill. So if you are listening and you feel like the stuff Rachel is talking about resonates with you and you just want somebody to like stand next to you and take you through the stuff, please consider hiring a one-to-one copywriter because when you have that copy done and it feels like you, I can't express the confidence that it creates for you. Would you agree, Rachel? 
Absolutely. And I'm really an advocate for making sure that you can do this yourself. So it's not just me writing for you, because I do believe that once you understand like the really basics of copywriting and how to clarify a point, and then you understand who you are and what you're here to talk about, you don't need a copywriter. You can do whatever you whatever you want. You can offer whatever you want because you know how to communicate the value of it. Yes. It really is a skill that can be learned. And so I love that you said that. But I did want to point out like, this is something that's an investment, but it is such a worthwhile investment when you have somebody who's got your back like this. So Rachel, how can... So I, you're on Instagram. Are you at I am Rachel Weaver? I am. Yes. That's I don't it. know why I remember your, your handle. I see your stuff all the time. So I want to say Rachel is an R-A-C-H-A-E-L if you're looking for her on Instagram. Yes. But how can people get in touch with you or see more of your stuff other places? Yeah. I mean, my website is Rachel Weaver and it's R-A-C-H-A-E-L. And then I also have a free Facebook group called the Align Copy Posse. I can send the link for that. But yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Great. And I will drop all of those links in the show notes so people have them right from the podcast app. Rachel, is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? You know, I we could go down so many tangents, but <laughs> I this this was a great conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I so I covered the bases you're saying. I think so. Yeah. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) The projector in me has to make sure that I squeeze every bit out. (laughs) Well, I'm so glad you were here today. I'm so glad that the tech gods finally were on our sides and that we were able to record. I just want to appreciate you for coming on and also for everybody listening. Thanks for showing up. I know there's a lot of options out there for you to get your information. So thank you for tuning into this conversation. I would love to know what you think. So you can reach out to me on Instagram at Jen Liddy Coach or Rachel Weaver, who's at I am Rachel Weaver. And Rachel, thank you again. This was super fun. Thank you so much, Jen. Bye.